Hi, I'm Ann. Welcome to Wild Wednesday. Uh, behind me is a bird blind and I am a birder. Uh, love to bird. Also, I love to uh, uh, help keep the bird blind here stocked with food and uh, my job this past year since the bird feeders installed, I have been making uh, homemade suet for the birds. So I'm going to tell you how to make homemade suet, uh, what not to use, what to use. And we're going to be talking about some of the ingredients and why it's important to birds. I'm going to take my binoculars off and act like I'm in my own kitchen at, at home. Uh, first of all, I'm talking about our mostly our songbirds here, our woodpeckers and our songbirds that might come to your backyard feeders and that uh, come to our bird blind here that's behind me. Uh, birds have a very, very high uh, metabolic rate. So eating fat is one of their best energy sources. Don't think of them as humans like, oh my gosh, you know, eating fat. Uh, they need to consume anywhere from a fourth to a third of their body weight in, uh, with food uh, during their, their lifespans, especially when they're migrating, they're raising their young. So it's a good way for us to help the birds out during uh, inclement weather. Also, it lures them in closer. We can enjoy uh, uh, enjoy them. Now many of you have heard about, uh, have heard the term suet. Well what is suet? Suet is simply animal fat and I'm going to talk to you uh, today about how you can make some animal fat suet. The best suet you can feed birds is beef suet, particularly from around the kidneys of a cow. Now obviously uh, I'm not going to be working with that. It's uh, best left to commercial operators. Uh, it's expensive. If you do find beef suet, uh, you'll be surprised at how much it costs. But we have a low-cost alternative to, to that, and it is simply lard, rendered a uh, part of beef, maybe a uh, pig also in here. It's hydrogenated. It does have two preservatives added to it, but not in the enough that would be harmful to birds. Uh, I grew up eating lard. I'm from the South. Uh, fried chicken and lard, uh, the best pies, cakes, cookies, and pie crust also were made with lard. And it's also used in Hispanic cooking, especially to make really good tamales. So this is, if you read the label here, it will just tell you that this is hydro hydrogenated, let me start all over that, hydrogenated lard and BHT and BHA, which are chemicals that shouldn't hurt your, hurt your birds very much. Do not use Crisco. I don't care if you're a vegan, vegetarian, whatever, uh, uh, do not use uh, that product in your bird suet. It is made from soybean oils, the, uh, the oils from another different types of plants. It is full of uh, preservatives, additives, if you read the label. So no Crisco, lard. Eight pounds here, about $10, right? So we're gonna start off And I usually make about a pound of this a, a time. And I can tell it is cool today because I am having trouble uh, scooping this out. The good thing about this type of lard is it will not melt. Uh, so it holds its shape well, and that's another good reason for using it. Uh, we normally don't have to feed our birds uh, suet during the hottest part of the summer. You can, but winter, spring, and fall is the most important time for uh, feeding birds suet. If you'd just like to try suet, uh, don't want to go to all this trouble, uh, you can go to some place like Wild Birds Unlimited and they have really high quality beef suet you can buy there. Uh, we use so much suet uh, here in our feeders that it's more economical for us to make our own. And also you can recycle a lot of your common food stuffs that you have in your home. Uh, I go through my freezer, I go through my pantry, I'm like, oh, I can put that in the suet this week. So we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to make a pretty small batch right here. I've got about that much suet in here. All right, so we're going to put our suet aside, and I usually uh, do about 30% uh, 
added things to my suet. You can add up to 50% or more. Uh, it helps. Uh, the birds like uh, the, some of the things that we're going to put in here. It makes it more attractive. So now let's talk about what to put in this and what not to put in. First of all, one of the best things to put in suet is black oil sunflowers. That's a, a seed that is uh, enjoyed by so many species of birds. So I'm going to put a few handfuls of that in here. Put our sunflower aside. And I mix some in this bag. Now here's the beauty. I found whole, raw, unsalted uh, almonds in my refrigerator and I you know I'm thinking I think I bought those about eight or ten months ago and they may not be good. So I'm gonna recycle these expensive uh, almonds from my refrigerator in here and I put them in a bag and I just crushed them up a little bit because the little birds cannot eat a whole almond. So I just got a hammer and I just whacked on these things. So they're going to love the almonds. So we're going to put some almond in there, raw, unsalted. Remember, birds do not like or do not need salt. Let's see. Oh, here's one of my favorite things. Grits, cracked ground corn. Uh, this Birds love this. Uh, something I love, again, it must be the lard in the south. Also, I'm a big grit eater. I usually get grits. Uh, that are stone ground that don't have anything added to them that have to be refrigerated because you don't want to feed your birds a bunch of preservatives or additives just like us. So these come from Birmingham, Alabama and it says ingredients un unenriched white corn. Good for you, good for our birds. So we're going to put some of this wonderful grits in here and also the smaller songbirds can eat that let's go all right these expired like eight months ago and i'm thinking hmm flour wheat so after i look at the uh, ingredients it's got salt limed corn flour lime is a little suspicious to me palm oil so I'm thinking this is probably not the best thing for birds you could probably feed it to them but uh, I'm just gonna uh, trash these so I'm not gonna use the old El Paso uh, testado shells here's another thing I want to show y'all a lot of people save bacon drippings to use for their suet do not ever use bacon drippings for your suet it is full of nitrates all sorts of byproducts from the curing of bacon. It is the worst thing you could probably feed your birds. So no, no bacon anything. Here's some granola here. And notice right here it says cocoa. Birds, like your dogs, cannot tolerate chocolate. Don't ever put chocolate in your suet. So I'm not going to use this. But, this toasted coconut almond, I have looked, contains coconut and almond, brown rice, cane sugar, sugar's okay for birds in small amounts, natural flavors, that's probably pretty good. So I'm going to say this is a good thing. So we're going to put a little bit of this granola in here. Here's a oh, muesli. That is usually a good, and I love this stuff. Uh, it's kind of an acquired uh, taste. And it's got dates, uh, sunflower. Uh, fruits are fine for birds if they're dry. Just make sure they're not uh, salted or anything. Uh, the ingredients look good, so we could use this. But since I'm still eating this, I'm not going to add it. But this would be good to put in your bird. Triscuits. Whole grain wheat, canola oil, sea salt. Yeah. The sodium looks about 7%. You could possibly use this because of the salt content and because it's highly processed. I'm just going to say 
No, I, I don't want to put this up. All right, here are beans. No, birds cannot uh, eat beans. They could if they were fresh from the bean plant or on the bean plant, they might could eat them, but no bird can eat something this hard. So, so let's skip any uh, of this type of product. Nuts, nuts are normally good. In fact, we have some almonds in there. Do not use uh, peanuts that have been salted, roasted, or have oil on them like these have. In fact, these were so good, I've already eaten them. But uh, you can buy cheap bulk peanuts that are raw uh, anywhere if you want to add peanuts. Birds love peanuts, but not the kind that you get for Christmas that you don't finish the uh, uh, big container off of. Another thing, rice. Contrary to popular belief, eating rice does not cause a bird's uh, stomach to explode. However, it is so hard and so big that your little tiny uh, Caroline chickadees can't eat this. So, it also, if you cook it, you could possibly use, use cooked rice in your uh, suet. But if you do use cooked rice, use the, uh, the brown kind because there's no point in feeding them the white polished rice which has absolutely no nutrients uh, in the outer hull. So if you do have some uh, uncooked plain brown rice, you could use that, but I'm not just putting raw rice in there. That's uh, just kind of wasteful. Peanut butter, they love it. It also loves to eat through your dollars. It's very expensive to feed birds peanut butter. So I usually just put a little bit in there. And also read your label because some of our peanut butter has a lot of added uh, ingredients and salts in it. So we are going to just put just a little bit of peanut butter in there. I'm gonna have to use the, this is kind of a messy process, but birds do love peanut butter. And we're only going, all right, here comes the fun part. I am going to mix this up quickly. You've got children. This is uh, something they love to do. I usually, just like any good cook, just stick my hands in there and, and let it go. So it's mixing up nicely. That lard gives it a, a structure. So this is looking pretty good, isn't it? Uh, you'll be glad to know uh, most of the birds that come to our seed feeders, of course, are seed eaters. But if you use suet, you will also attract woodpeckers, uh, maybe warblers, wrens. You will attract a great more different uh, variety of birds. All right. That's about it right there. And what I normally do is I divide this into little clumps. And you don't have to do a super duper job of mixing it, by the way. And what I usually do is just wrap these. And put it in a plastic bag. Where did I put my plastic bag? Put it in a Ziploc bag and just keep it in your refrigerator till it's time to use. So very simple. Uh, do some research of your own. Look in your pantry. Got any questions? Of course, you can Google what to feed your birds. And we're going to finish off by actually putting the suet in our neat feeders back here. So see you behind the blind. Hi. This is Ann and I'm back at the bird blind. Uh, we're gonna put the suet that we made uh, into our suet feeder. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, suet containers and, and talk a little bit more. Uh, this is a wonderful area. The uh, blind up here, of course, uh, screens humans uh, that are looking at the birds here. So the birds feel very safe here. They, they see us behind that, that wooden stockade fence, but uh, not enough of our bodies and movement to, to scare them all. We made suet, a homemade variety. We use a lot of suet here at River Legacy, and it's just the most economical way for us to do it. Besides, it's kind of fun, and we get to recycle uh, household food products into our suet. Uh, we use seeds back here that uh, we buy from uh, 
uh, Wild Birds Unlimited. Uh, I use uh, things that I've gotten from my own home and uh, some other things to make uh, suet. Uh, one thing I do want to remind you and that you will not find uh, back here for bird food is any type of bread products. Uh, we naturalists here at River Legacy, every time uh, we, uh, we try and uh, caution people, bur uh, birds, uh, bread is not a good food for birds. It's highly processed. It's, it's uh, too high in carbohydrates. It's not good for them. So uh, fat's fine for them, but uh, not bread. So please don't uh, feed your birds uh, uh, bread products. Uh, the suet. You can buy... Uh, I think they're 12 ounce suet cakes pre-made that fit into these wire containers that you can hang somewhere. These are really handy if you've got just a small backyard, just want to try feeding uh, suet, uh, see what happens at your house. I recommend just buying a, a cake and uh, a little feeder with it that you can use. It's very clean, easy to use and so forth. For our homemade suet, I'm going to show you what we use to hold our suet. Uh, one of our other naturalists has made uh, several of the suet feeders that he, he showed. Uh, he just took a log and made a, a, a crevasse in it here. And this is what we're going to use. It's elevated off the ground, uh, uh, so it's... it's the birds find it easy to get to. They can dash around. They've got plenty of cover back here. You can use a lot of different things. Here is our suet that, that we have made. Uh, looks pretty good here. It's, I can smell that peanut butter. So what we simply do is just smear, push. Yeah. You can uh, use this in the summer. Uh, it it if the, animal, the birds are eating it quickly, but normally uh, we do most of our suet feeding in the spring, uh, early summer, uh, in fall and winter. Summertime, uh, birds can find a lot of their natural food. So this is looking really good, you guys, and it smells wonderful. We've got peanuts, peanut butter, almonds, sunflower seeds, and of course our 100% lard. So this will provide a lot of energy for our bird friends. So there we are, start to finish, making homemade bird suet and how to put it out. Thanks.